Okay, mine has crescendo, which means the start of your crescendo through all those notes, and then it has diminuendo here. Here's where it, see, that's where the diminuendo comes. Over a while, all of those eighth notes. So this is the peak. Ta -da. Yeah. Okay. So let me be sure that I've got this right. So it's starting with the first measure in the last line with the. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That doesn't get louder coming down, does it? No. Well, you remember you're spacing this out over a whole lot of notes. So you're no that measure. I wouldn't do that loud. I'd go. To be. And then I kind of escalate. See that? With the, with the clash. Because the big surprise really is that Neapolitan, but I don't think you want to smack the second beat there, right? We talked about that wouldn't make sense. So yeah. undulations, right? You have undulating notes. You never have one clear dynamic. It's your undulating in and out of those eighth notes. By the time you get to that, those last notes, you should be coming way down. Look. Yeah, so you always have to watch out for thumbs, right? That you go around your thumb. You always... This is the tricky part here. Because you can always get those pokey thumbs that just, you know, disturb what? The horizontal uh, movement of eighth notes. Plus, you have a thumb there. So the thumb says it wants to roll to the longer fingers like this. You know, see that? Destination G. Remember it's sun. What's the, where's the destination of the G? Do me a favor, when you get to that second beat of that second measure with the C G in the left hand and the B in the right, pull it down under. Right, so you need to drop your thumb into a feather like thumb on that here. And that's a gajic. You know, a gajic means what? A note that is longer than its surrounding notes. It's like okay. a half note. It's a quarter note tie. You have to make the listener know that that note is like the violin player would draw out with vibrato the note with the accent on it. Without okay. an accent. I would think of a leaning, lean on it. Lean on that D. On the first detached. Yeah, on the first D. On that, and one that's tied over. The one that's tied over. The D that's tied with a five on it, yes? Let's see. This one. I mean, yeah, that wait. one, that can't be off in the, in the forest. It must come out. Yeah, so, so, so you came out of this. Da, 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 da. I need to hear it. Now it needs to fall down when it gets to this. Okay? And then keep that dynamic. Because we're not really playing usually double forte. Because remember it's what? Sequence down by half step. But he flashes out the D because why? He has it detached from the note before it. Whereas the next pair is legato. 
and should be quieter. Yeah, because it's sequenced down. It's anything yeah. that falls down like that, especially half steps, side down. Absolutely, side down. How many Ds he has? Like, look, if you look at what comes before, he says two Ds before that, then another D. So you have to make color changes for all the Ds. Watch. Da, 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 da. More. See? And less. And fall down back to soft. I say that would be a more of an MFD. That would be an MFD with the accent, and then it would come down to an MP, C sharp, and then back to a P after that. Wait, this is the soft one, and this is getting ready for the MF. And now we're falling down to MP, and now we're going to P. Because we started with P, didn't we? But this is a very high bunch of notes suddenly in this piece, right? It's up to high Ds. Yeah, the peak D would be the agogic D that's tied over, and then it comes out of this sequence. So I want, I want the listener to know that's so beautiful, that sequence. The, the loudest D is going to be the tied over D that okay. comes right. later. That's going to be, that's going to be the... And it's okay. a crazy thing because it's like a what? It's a syncopated beat because it's the third beat. He puts an accent on an off beat, doesn't he? He creates an, an accented off beat right in the middle of nowhere because he wants you to bring it out. You're really comparing this, this springboard to watch. Now answer that legato. That's what the listener's listening for, the relationship for, from E sharp to D to its following E to C sharp. That's the relationship of sequence. And that's justified by blocking lean less. But this is, this is a, a little springboard into that watch. I'm not going to accent this. I'm going to accent this, that. He wants us to. He wants that to jump out, really. And then he's saying, oh, cool down. And now just careen away like the beginning. Yeah, it's a tricky place because it could just go by and nobody knows what happened. Okay. And the interesting thing is one is detached. It's the same interval. And the next one is connected. So that is a heart-wrenching feeling to the connected one after the detached one. See, because this isn't this isn't big, but this is here and now side. See, and now oh, just fall out of that. Yeah. Right. When you do that D, can you come under it with this? See, like what I do. Can you come under because it's detached? Can you come under and push forward on it so you get a beautiful D? from below, wrist forward. Now this one's easier because it's really just this. Because it's connected. So this is level hand and this is a little bit forward. The C sharp. Right, right. Because the E now is paired off with this. Go a little bit forward to that. Remember, the first one is detached. These are detached notes. These are detached detached, now surprise, connect. Okay. Yeah, you know what's confusing about this is so many Ds and you have to know how you're playing all of the four, three Ds, three, one's tied, right? There's two Ds before the tied one and you don't want that to intrude upon destination D tied note, that's your destination. Most students don't do that because they don't see so many Ds. They play this one too loud. This one isn't loud. It happens to be this. See, he fools us. He's playing around with that idea. Okay. Yeah. He's put a tie over note from the third beat to the first and on surrounded that by quicker notes. That's called an agogic accent. It automatically comes out. Even if he didn't write that in, I would do it that way. There, I had written over top of it. And I you see the, the danger is for the student to do this. See, that wouldn't make sense, would it? If you did... It's ridiculous. It's 
he's doing. Da, da, da. There, now he's. I mean, it's amazing. He uses rhythm there as a, a device. It's a device in the phrasing.